Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to our Little Tiles mod tutorial, uh, features tutorial. <laughs> um, anyways, we're picking back up from the last episode, so we're going to jump right in. We're going to be covering the, some, you know, some more of the advanced uh, things that you can do with it. Just some examples and some ideas and stuff like that, and how the mod works. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump back into it. Okay, and then... Um, we also have, here's another really, really cool one. Well, there's the bed and then there's the storage. That's the two that we have not covered yet. So the bed, for example, we'll do that. Uh, just, just for example's sake. We're not getting too crazy fancy or nothing, but because um, there's so much to cover and it's just not time for all that. But <laughs> let's go ahead and grab that. Let's set this to a bed. Now you're going to have this right here. This is very important. Um, depending on where you set your facing, that is where uh, you're going to be facing. So your head's going to be in the opposite direction. Okay, so we're going to say that our head's going to be facing west. Okay. Um, for this, you have to make sure and, and see where your structure is going to be placed, and uh, make sure that you can, you know, make sure that your head's in the right spot. The the uh, the direction doesn't decide where your head's going to go. It's where like you're facing, where your body's going to lay. Okay, so let's go ahead and craft this out, and let's set this down like right there. Okay, and let's set the time to night. So I can come over here, right click that, and I'm sleeping on the bed. Um, it does kind of, it did kind of set me off center. I bet it's, uh, yeah, it actually kind of laid me on right there. So th with these, it's better if you line them up. Um, within a certain block space, but um, you can make a bed with that. So you can make something and it will set your spawn point and all that stuff. You can set it with that. Uh, so you can just make a bed. <laughs> you could, I mean, you could literally make it out of one bit if you wanted to. So uh, that is that is another little feature of that. And you can make some really big, crazy, eccentric beds if you wanted to. Um, now, lastly, the last little thing that we've got here. Okay, now for example, let's grab a piece of oak wood and we're going to make a, uh, we'll make it into a box. You can make it however you want to. We're going to leave it hollow, one wide, that's good. And then what we're going to do, let's build, let's build it big. Let's do like this. Okay, so we have a big hollow section of wood, basically. And then what we're going to do is we're going to break into the middle of this. And we are going to make, um, there is a certain block that you can craft. It's this right here, little storage block. And and then what we can do is we can take these little storage blocks. And let me go into survival mode so you can see um, what I'm talking about. But we can take these and we can drop them into the bag. Okay. And then what we can do is let me select... A little storage block and I can right click and I can bring this out yeah it's not enough material I know we'll go ahead and place a whole block of that in there okay um, and then if we take a look inside of here you could see it's used most of these out of here right um, because it does it basically makes a block in place of a chest it makes a block um, and I'll show you let me actually just put these out Got like two pixels. There we go. That's how much a single storage block makes in little tiles. There's a lot. It's more than what you, it's more than one block, right? Um, and let's set this to, let's set this back to game mode C now. I just want to show you one chest actually makes quite a bit. And I want to show you how much storage you get from a single chest. And then I'll show you how much storage you actually get. Uh, like if I was to fill this thing up. So what I can do is I can just right click, then come over here and right click. There we go. And then we're going to set this to storage. Um, invisible storage tiles. What this does, if you hit invisible storage tiles, basically the storage tiles that are inside, it makes them invisible. Okay. So for example, if I select that, um, and then I come over here and I craft one of these. That way, if you have your storage tiles somewhere visible, you're not going to be able to see them in the structure. But we can set this down. You can see we can't see the storage tiles down there. 
But if I come over here and I right click that, look how much space we have. And we can take and drop stacks into here. I think this last one, see the last one only accepts two items. That's actually kind of important. Uh, what, the, what each of those storage tiles does is for every single pixel in here, you can store one item. Okay, so for example, for this right here, this takes 64 pixels to store a full stack of items. Um, but you can see just from a single chest, we have more than a double, ch a double chest worth of blocks. Okay, and for example, let me come over here now and let's go ahead and just fill this thing up. There we go. Oh, actually, you know what? I had it set to hollow, so I bet, I bet those in there aren't even, that's probably why it went so far. But you do get this much storage from a single block. Um, I was wondering why the blocks were so, so big. So for example, um, we've got all of that laid out. So let's go ahead and copy it into a pattern. It might be short a couple blocks, but just to give you an example. So let's set this to storage and we're going to say invisible storage tiles again. And you can see there's 97,080 space okay that's how much that's how many items this this three by three can store um can store a massive amount so for example if i come over here and i place this down now storage tiles are invisible now you notice that i can't i can't move into them they're still there physically but they're invisible to my eyes i can't see them okay and i can right click and look at this i even get a little scroll bar and i can store 90,000 90,000 items inside of this and so I can make a chest I can make them as ornate as I want with all kinds of like detail and then just put some storage blocks in there and there we go it's now a container right I mean there's all kinds of things that you can do with it so just a heads up <laughs> that's the last that's the last feature I mean if you guys have any questions or anything or that's the last uh, recipe feature I still got some more to show you though but if you guys have any questions about any of that, do let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to get those answered for you. I'll also include a link uh, down below for the wiki so you can take a look at that if you have any questions and stuff. But there's still more to cover now. Um, there is the exporter and the importer. Um, these, for example, what you can do is you can set these things up. And they're like little structures. And uh, technically you could build this in world, you know, like visually. I mean, that's how crazy you can get with little tiles. Um, literally... Like chisels and bits, there's some limitation to it. Little tiles, you can literally do pretty much anything you want as far as building with little tiles. Like, for example, one thing I've been working on is I want to have a window where you can actually go over and you can open the bottom pane of the window and, like, raise it up. You know, because the doors, you don't have to necessarily use those as doors that you walk through. Like, I showed you the slice gate idea, but you could also do little windows that actually open and close and things like that that you can do. And also places where you could open up and fire arrows out of, you know. Um, all of that, st all of that stuff would work. The doors don't even have a minimum size, so you can. I mean, I could literally have two blocks, and that's a door, you know, uh, or two little. I mean, two little pixels that raise. I mean, you could do all kinds of stuff with it if you wanted to. But the little exporter and little importer, this is actually kind of nice because if I wanted to, if I made something really cool and I had somebody that w was interested in it, I can just drop this into here. I can hit copy, and then they can. I can send. I can basically paste the link into chat or paste it into chat, or paste it into, say, the Discord, or something like that, they can grab that, they can come over here, and they can hit paste, and import, and look at that. They get an advanced recipe with what I just sent. So that's how that works. I mean, you can you can quickly, you know, if you're on a server, they don't have to come over there with a bunch of blueprints and try to copy the entire structure and all that. You can grab, you know, like, for example, if I had this huge, humongo super thing that I've got, um, I can grab the... Uh, <clears throat> drop it into here, copy, and then come over to here, paste, import, there you go. And now you've got the ginormous structure. So then I can just come over here, craft one of those, and I think this is the fixed one, so it needs like a lot of space, but then I can just come over here and I can drop that down, and there you go. So I mean, really there's a whole lot that you can do. Um, now, out of curiosity, one thing I want to try doing real quick, because I haven't showed you the advanced, uh, the advanced recipes. These are pretty cool because what they do, they do a lot of the same stuff as, they do a lot of the same stuff as the standard recipe, but there's a couple added features. 
because normal recipes, I'm only copying little tiles blocks. That's what that's what normal recipes do. All they do is they copy normal or they copy little tile stuff. But the advanced recipes, a little bit more, a little bit more advanced because they can actually copy chisel and bits and they can copy normal. So for example, if I come over here and I look right down there and I say, uh, let's say Gen, the abandoned wood tower. Okay, <laughs> this is recurrent complex, but let's say slash confirm. There we go. So we have this big tower, right? Well, what I could do now, what I can do is I can come over here. Okay, so let's select this structure. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say regular blocks. Um, and you can see we can do chisel and bit blocks, little tile blocks, all that stuff. Remember structures. We can also scale it. So let's take it. Uh, let's save that. Let's drop the scale to 130 30 seconds, okay? And then we can do all this stuff. We're going to go ahead and just leave it as none. Okay, so what we can do now, what do I have in my... Okay, we're going to drop that into there. Let's craft it. Okay, this is where it gets really insane. Like, really, <laughs> really insane. Okay, so we've taken this tower, this structure that's just spawned in the world. We've copied this whole structure, and we've made a miniature of it. And it's got that little glowstone block that I have there. Um, but we've made a miniature of it. And then, for example, if I came over... Let me grab it again, for example. By the way, that's where you clear. If you if you want to clear a recipe, so I can hit clear. So you can clear if, if you want to wipe your recipes. You don't have to put them in a crafting grid or any of that stuff. You just, you do it through there. And you just hit clear and then you're done. But let's grab this. Okay. And let's go ahead and we're going to say regular blocks. You can also, if you have chiseling bits and little tiles, you can mark those in there too. But let's set it to, um, we did 130 seconds last time. Let's do one eight. Okay. Let's make it. And... <laughs> What's cool is you can make like maps that you walk in of like your surroundings because you could just copy the entire world if you want and and do crazy things with it like this. Okay, so we've made something that's one eighth scale. That's a one thirty second scale, but here we've got a one eighth scale of our little tower. Just pew just made with the advanced recipes. Is that not cool? I mean, you you can't deny that that's awesome. And I can just break that off if I want to. And I can break that one off if I want to. But it, it actually takes it and it scales it down. It's so cool, right? I mean, there's like, just chisels and bits can't, it can't do even 10% even of everything that you can do with little tiles. That's why I've been, for for like a year now, I've been pushing for this mod. I, like, I want to see it in packs because it's just so good. <laughs> it's so good. It can do like everything that chisels and bits can do pretty much. Now, there is one thing that's not... At, at first glance, it's not as powerful. And I'm about to show you that. We're not done. We've still got a few more features to uh, to look at here. Okay, but uh, little tiles, if you look right here, there's still a bunch of other stuff, right? There's like uh, clean blocks. There's floor blocks. And these, basically, you can use them with the paintbrush effects and stuff because that has kind of a different color. And, for example, if I grab... This is actually a good example here. If I grab that... And we grab the this right here, and let's select our floor block, okay. And let's set the color of this to say just a dark purple. Um, and we're gonna say one block is fine. Um, and then we place this out, right? There we go. Say it's a darker purple and a lighter purple. It, it copies those colors. And, I mean, you could paint these different colors, then copy them through. And, you know, you, there's a lot of things you could do with it. But, basically, it gives you some free blocks. Like, here's a grainy block. Um, these are basically just things that you can use with the paintbrush. Uh, these are all craftable. They're not very expensive. You have a dirt version. But, it's basically dirt and gravel and cobblestone and floor blocks and stuff that start as a white. So, they do take really, really well to paint. Then these right here, these are basically glass. You have like a thick glass. You have a thin glass, um, which of course affects how transparent it is. And once again, it takes really well to the painting. Uh, so you can drop these in your bit bags. Now, there's also water blocks. These craft with buckets, and there's, and there's lava blocks, which craft with lava. 
Um, and then there's wooden planks and, you know, all that different stuff. You can also make white water, which takes water and it turns it into a white color. Um, now, what's really, really cool with this, let's grab, let's grab that. And let's grab lava. Let's grab water. Okay. Now, this is something that chisels and bits does not have. Now, you can't take, it's not like chisels and bits, and I can't take a, a bucket of, molten fluid and dump it in a tank and chisel it down. I cannot do that. But do you really need that when you have full RGB support? Not really, I don't think. So what we can do is let's take our water. We're going to take our water blocks. And so uh, we're going to leave those as is. And let's say we're going to do this like seven or five, five thickness. Okay. So I can click here and I can bring this out like that. Okay, and you'll notice that whenever I walk through it, I walk slow. Okay, that's like chisels and bits. Chisels and bits can do that. And then I can also do, uh, for example, the lava. Uh, for example, if I do some lava, um, oh, I dyed it, I dyed it purple. But uh, the lava wheel, okay, yeah, maybe just one thick. I bet that's what it is. I bet one thick doesn't, uh, what if I do it like two? No, two doesn't. Okay, at seven, at seven bits high, it'll start to burn you, okay? Which is basically just coming up over your shoes, more or less. <laughs> um, but it will burn you, and these do work with structures, so you can make structures that have liquid and, and transplant them over. But for example, I can take this lava, and see, there's red lava. You know, I can color this. Certain colors don't take as well to it. If you just do like a straight yellow, it's not going to come out very good. Um, but I can make dark lava. So do I really need molten fluid? No, because I can make, I mean, that's pretty much the molten fluid texture, right? It's always lava that's been colored. Um, I can do that with little tiles. I can just paint it. Um, and I can do the same thing with water. But one really, really cool thing I can do um, that you can't even come close to doing this with chisels and bits is I can take this bucket and I can actually right click this. Okay. And I can come down through here and just right click, right click, right click, right click, right click. Oh, okay, there it is. There it is. I didn't have the, uh, it wasn't flowing yet. It does a couple variations, like if the water's still this way, still that way. But you can see it's flowing, and if I stand in it, it's going to push me. And so if I want it to flow the other way, I can right-click this with a bucket. And now if I step in this, it pulls me in that direction. And I could do it in the other direction, it's going to push me down in this direction. Do it again, and it's going to push me over here and then off in this direction. So I can make this water really, really low like this and make it push. And I'm actually not for sure if this works, but this actually just came to mind. I wonder if you could make Enderman Water Farm with this. I'm not for sure. So for example, if I spawn, ah, it still teleports. Okay. Um, but yeah, so anyways, you can make the water push and go in different directions and all that crazy stuff. With a bucket, you can cycle through the different directions. And this works, I mean, if you wanted to... Uh, for example, okay, so I made all this like grayish water <laughs> and I can, I can cycle this. Yeah. Okay. See, it's cycling down. That's what it's doing. And what's cool is I could have it go up. I forgot. That's what it was doing before. That's why the first couple, it didn't change them, but I can have it. So the water, I'm, I've got my hands off the keyboard, but you can see the water is slowly pushing me upwards. Um, it's like a new, a new take on a water elevator because the water actually sends you Upwards. Now, if I'm in survival mode, one thing to note is it is going to uh, drown you, you know, if you're in the water. But you can actually have the water defy gravity and push you upwards as opposed to just pulling you downwards. So, and having to swim. Because if I jump in this, for example, and I swim, like look how fast I move up. If I try to go down, on the other hand, I'm holding shift and I can't go down. I cannot sink in this water because it's constantly pushing me upwards. So, I mean, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with with just different stuff um, within the mod. And um, <laughs> literally, your imagination is your limit. Now, there's one other thing that I want to show you, and this is another one of my favorite blocks. Uh, within the mod that is the little particle blocks these things are so cool because you can place these down and they're little bitty they're little bitty so i mean they're one pixel in size um and these are crafted like this and that makes a little particle block it's very very small um that's the default recipe but um so there we go 
That's what a little particle block looks like. And if you hold the wrench in your hand, it's going to stop emitting particles because some of the particles can get pretty crazy. But you can click on this and you can change the particles. So there's smoke, there's large smoke, which makes basically bigger, bigger smoke stacks. Whoops, save it. There we go. Bigger smoke stacks. Um, whenever you do that, there is also instant spell, which is like that. I mean, there's a lot of different variations. Some of them are kind of even strange. Um, like there's lava, <laughs> fires up lava. Uh, <laughs> there's explosions, so you can have things exploding. Then there's huge explosions that are like the Ender Dragon explosions. Um, slime does like that. Um, but for example, there's uh, Mob Appearance <laughs> is the Guardian one. Um, red Dust is that. I mean, there's lots of different particles here. Drip water and drip lava. Uh, these, you'll notice, they kind of just pull up. If I remove that, it'll actually start dripping water. Um, drip lava, flames, splashes, mob spells, ender rods. Uh, ender rods actually one of my favorites because it does do kind of a mystical little effect there. Um, spell ambient. It's like that. I mean, like I said, there's a ton of different things in here that you can mess with. Pretty much all the particles from like the default game are in here. Um, and then what we can do is we can set this. This is going to change the colors. Um, so, for example, if I wanted red spell particles, look at that. But this is uh, this is full RGB right here, so you can change the colors. I want I want purple spell particles, and I can do that. Um, there are speed particles uh, per tick, and so we could set this to say 20. And then what's going to happen is it's only going to emit. It's going to emit 20 particles per tick. So it's just like going crazy. And I mean, you could make this go just insane if you wanted to. Um, and then there's this right here. Whenever you change this, you can see kind of the, uh, they go a lot further. Whereas these would dissipate. This is basically the lifespan. So if I set it to, say, 0.7 and I save it, they barely even come off the particle block and they dissipate. If I set this up, they bubble up into the sky. So, and I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. And I mean, you can stick it down. Um, you can also do randomize too, which is going to, uh, it's actually going to randomize. So, and it's going to randomize the colors. You can see there's all different kinds of colors coming up here. And the, for example, if I change it to, let's say smoke. Okay, randomize. It's shooting smoke all over the place. I'll show you why it's shooting in all the places. If we set this back down to zero, zero is going to send it straight up only. So in addition to being your RGB for something like this right here, like Mob Spell Ambient, it's your RGB, but it's also to some extent it's going to affect, like if I do that, it's going to start sending it out as well. So it changes the colors if you don't have Randomize on. If you have Randomize, they're all going to be that color, but then it also, in it, changes up the spread a little bit. So instead of just going straight up, it's going to spread it. Okay. Um, but I tend to like randomize for stuff like this because you kind of have like all different colors. Um, but if you wanted them spreading all over the place, but you wanted them only black, it might, I think it's a little bit more tricky. I don't think I've ever been able to do that because it pretty much shares the same bars. Um, but most of these, you don't have um, the randomize on colors. You only have randomize on direction and stuff like that. So. And don't forget that you do have like transparency with your water and stuff as well. So if you wanted to, uh, just a little side note here at the end of the video, but you do have um, oops, transparency. So that's like semi-transparent water. But so yeah, that pretty much covers um, everything I was wanting to cover. I, there's a pretty good chance I probably missed something. I uh, forgot to show you something. And if I think of it, I'll throw it in here while I'm editing or something. But um, there's, I mean, there's pretty much so many features. It's, it's hard to, you know, with chisels and bits, I can pretty much say, okay, you chisel things, you pattern things. Here's your bag that you stick stuff in. That's that, you know, there's not a whole, but this, there's so many different things like, like this, this is probably one of my favorite features. It's just, just that you can miniaturize things, you know, and, and the doors and the beds and the ladders and the storage blocks and, and being able to just copy big chunks of things, even whole buildings. You know, it's just insane what all you can actually do with this mod. Because I could literally, I could, um, one thing I didn't think to show you is I can actually grab, uh, ideally you want an advanced recipe for this, but 
Um, for example, I could just grab, go to there, open this up. We're going to say regular blocks, one to one, save it. Okay, and then we can come over here, and I mean, I can just copy the entire structure. Um, drop that into there, craft it. There we go. And place this down. Bow. Um, it's taking a second to render in, as you can tell, but it's going to render in everything. Now, you'll notice it does not render in things like fences, um, you know, because... <laughs> And this is actually kind of, it looks lopsided because it's setting on, um, you know, it's setting on a block divider. So it didn't, it didn't copy the fences and the cobwebs and things like that because you can't, you can't tile those. Um, you can't make little tiles and stuff with those. So, but everything else it is copied. Um, you know, every, all the blocks, all the block versions, stairs, you can't little tile stairs. So certain things aren't going to work with this, but you can take pretty much whole structures and copy them over. And you'll notice even redstone lamps, you can you can little tile those. So pretty much everything that we've moved over, it's actually taken it, it's converted it into little tile blocks and moved the whole structure. And the same is true, like I said, there's there's chisels and bits support. So if you have chisels and bits, you make a big structure of chisels and bits, you can then copy the entire structure and move it, and it's going to convert it all over to little tiles. So that's how that works. Um, so anyways, that's pretty much what I have for you this episode. Um, or these episodes, probably going to end up being three episodes, I think, judging by the length on the footage, but that's okay. Three episodes, not that bad, considering how much there actually is to this mod. Like I said, I probably I probably forgot a few things, forgot to mention a few things, um, but I will include a link down below if you want to go to the wiki, and if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to get those answered for you. It's a little bit more of a learning curve than, say, chisels and bits, but you can just do a whole lot more once you get used to doing those things you can just do a whole lot more with it so but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did as always be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out and i hope to see you guys next time so until then as always do take care stay safe i'll see you guys then